Thanks to a number of surviving photographs, we have a good idea of what the Belper Mills were like before 1898. But thanks to a piece of work done by Matlock-based Evans Vittori, funded as part of the Great Place scheme, we've been able to recreate the site in 3D so that we're able to move around and appreciate the site in full. Here, we're starting from the west with the river bridge behind us. Rising up, we can get a scale of the buildings and how they all interconnected for the smooth running of the Strutt family's cotton thread production. Returning to ground level, we can see the gangway, which connected the two sides of the mill site from 1795 and, on the right, the West Mill, built in 1795 and topped at this stage with clock faces set in the gables and a cupola on the top. The mill was reached by a covered bridge over the mill leet. Staircases in the corners brought the need for false window recesses to preserve the aesthetic. To the right of the mill, across one of the leets, which fed the West Mill water wheels, there were a number of small buildings, one of which was probably the former watch house, the base for the Strutt night watchmen during the 19th century. They may also incorporate the house where George Benson Strutt lived before his mansion, Bridge Hill House, was erected on the hillside beyond in the 1790s. The house, closest to the road, was Bridgefoot House, housing one of the mill foremen at one point. Now, as we move round, we see the Horseshoe Weir of 1797 and the houses which stood between the North Mill and the river with workshops in the yard behind. There was also a small outbuilding attached to the North Mill, but no doorway on the gable as there is now. That wouldn't be added for another century. Where we have no clear photography, Buildings are greyed out. That includes the toilet block, with what looked to be an elevated corrugated roof here in the foreground. As we head round to where the East Mill would later be, you can see a little open space and the leet from the Derwent as it reaches the mill site. We're starting to see now the auxiliary buildings that were on this side, as well as glimpses of the West Mill and of course the mill chimney, which had stood almost alone since 1854. The taller building in the centre was the old Southside Reeling Mill, which was only taken down in the winter of 1913-14. Heading a little further east, we see more of the secondary buildings and then the sluice gates controlling water flow to the water wheels beneath the South Mill, the large building we're approaching. To the left of the South Mill, where the River Gardens entrance is today, there were a number of small buildings and gardens. At one time, there had been a laundry in this corner of the site, and at this stage, there was still a rather tall building, although with a small footprint, which is quite a curiosity. As we move back from the mills and rise above the houses on the opposite side of the Matlock Road, we have a clearer view of Bridge House with the South Mill behind it. The house was later split with the left-hand wing becoming a school from 1902. Now, we're also seeing the west side of the mill complex again, and for the first time, William Strutt's unique round mill, built from 1803 to 1813. As we return to street level, we see the railings to the right separating the south mill from the street. At the far end of the mill was a recessive extension and we can see behind it, again, the mill chimney. Continue your look around the Belper Mills before 1898 and in 1921, as well as the Milford Mills, in the other videos within this series.